Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. So, I wanted to do a quick recap of um, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Windy City Riot. Um, wanted to give an update on the current standings for the Stardom Cinderella Tournament. And I wanted to talk about my recent experience, uh, my new experience of Deadlock Pro Wrestling as I attended DPW Forever in my, <clears throat> in my hometown of Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, do bear with me, I am under the weather, um, but I will get through this. I wanted to go ahead and get this video out of the way so that I can focus on, rest, on resting. <coughs> Hmm, excuse me. Anyway, let's do a quick recap of the Cinderella Tournament. So, just uh, a rundown, a complete rundown of um, the second round and quarterfinals. So, we know that uh, Shuri and Himeka, uh had a time limit draw, so both of them were eliminated in the second round. Um, Hazuki was able to defeat Azumi, so that meant Hazuki advanced to the quarterfinals. <clears throat> Koguma actually beat Julia um, with an over-the-top rope uh, elimination. She was able to get like a drop kick to knock her off the apron. That was a big shock. That was a really big shock. Koguma eliminating Julia, and then Sayaida uh, defeated Mai Sakurai. Um, wasn't too surprised with that. Um, Mirai had a bye, so she's automatically into the quarterfinals. Um, Saki Kashima beat Mayu Iwatani in 17 seconds on a second attempt. Um, Kishikasai. She kicked out of the first attempt, then the second attempt, she got her. And Saki Kashima beat Mayu Iwatani in 17 seconds. <clears throat> that was crazy. That was really, really crazy. And then uh, Natsupoi defeated Unagi Sayaka. Got her with that, that cross-armed German suplex pin. That was pretty cool. And, um, of course, uh, Micah and Sayaka Matani, they um, got eliminated at the same time over the top rope. Uh, so that they're both eliminated. So that gave... Um, so the quarterfinals, um, Hazuki had a bye, so Hazuki actually automatically goes to the, to the semifinals because, like I said, there was no winner between Shirty and Himeka since uh, they both got eliminated via time limit draw. <clears throat> so, Hazuki's in the semis. Koguma went up against Sayaida in the quarterfinals, and uh, Koguma was able to defeat uh, Sayaida uh, pretty much using a similar pin to how um, Sayaida uses that that little bridge that bridge uh victory roll type of type of pen but yeah koguma got uh sayaida with that that was actually a pretty entertaining match between those two um kind of similar in stature in a way just you know koguma may be a little bit thicker a little bit taller but but yeah that i actually enjoyed that match um mirai defeated uh saki kashima um, I was kind of surprised that they actually did a handshake before the match. I was shocked. I was really shocked. Hoedo Tai doesn't, doesn't usually do handshakes. But Mirai was able to get a submission victory. Um, got her with that, that type of Kimura lock, sort of um, hoverboard lock, sort of submission on um, uh, Saki Kashima. She almost got to the rope, but Mirai was able to move her back to the middle, and that was pretty much a... That was pretty much a wrap. <clears throat> so, Koguma and Mirai advanced to the semis. And then Natsupoi, because Micah and Sayaka Matani uh, got eliminated at the same time, Natsupoi gets a bye into the semis. So, ladies and gentlemen, your final four for this year's Cinderella Tournament, Hazuki, Koguma, Mirai, Natsupoi. And 
apparently the matchups are set. It's going to be Mirai versus Natsupoi and Hazuki versus Koguma. The the Fukuoka Double Crazy teammates have to face each other in the semis. Oh man. Let's start with Mirai versus Natsupoi. Ooh, honestly, that match could go either way. That match could go either way. But you know something? Natsupoi has been on a roll. I mean, defeating Starlight Kid and Unagi Sayaka, I mean, she's she's had a pretty tough road. Um, Mirai, eh, beat Mina Shirakawa and Saki Kashima. Uh, Koguma. Now, Koguma has had a pretty, like, medium difficulty road. I mean, she beat Fuki Kendev, she beat Julia, and she beat Saya Ida. And then Hazuki, Hazuki beat, um, Miyu Amasaki and Azumi. You know what? I'm going to pick Natsupoi over Mirai. Natsupoi, I just really feel like, has been on a roll. And it would not surprise me to see Natsupoi in the finals of the Cinderella tournament. So I'm going to pick Natsupoi to defeat Mirai. But it wouldn't surprise me if Mirai got to the finals either. But I'm, I'm going to pick Natsupoi. I think she's going to pull it off. And then Koguma versus Hazuki. This one's this one's gonna be interesting because the last time they went against each other in a singles match, I think it was Hazuki's return match, and she beat Koguma, and then they became tag team partners and ended up winning the Goddess of Stardom tag titles together. You know what? Call me crazy. I'm going to root for Koguma. I'm going to root for Koguma to defeat Hazuki, to, to, to get that revenge victory. And then I think it's going to be Natsupoi and Koguma in the finals. But you know what? I like this final four. I really like this final four. Because honestly... I mean, all four of these ladies have never won the Cinderella tournament. So, honestly, I would not be mad at either of these four ladies winning the tournament, to be honest with you. I think this is a good Final Four. It's it's unique. I, I think it's a Final Four that probably a lot of us, at least 80, 85% of us, didn't predict. So, I, I like this Final Four. I really do. I really do. But we will find out uh, April 29th uh, who wins the Cinderella tournament. They're going to do the semifinals and the finals on April 29th. So um, should be good. But yeah, once again, your final four, Hazuki, Koguma, Mirai, Natsupoi. So that's two ladies from Stars, one lady from God's Eye, one lady from Donna Del Mundo. So, looking forward to it. Should be good. <clears throat> now, let's switch gears to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, Windy City Riot that took place in Chicago, Illinois this past weekend. Now, I actually saw the archived stream uh, on Fight TV. I've heard a lot of people that watched the stream live um, were saying that there were a lot of bad quality uh, spots during the stream that just really made made it almost like almost to the point of unwatchable so I was kind of worried about that but thankfully the archive version which they spoke about that they were going to deliver a much better archived stream which they did so to those that had to, to watch that live and have to deal with that on Fight TV dang that sucks that really sucks I hope y'all got a chance to, to watch Watch the archive. The archive 
was was definitely a lot better. Definitely a lot better. <clears throat> so they didn't show this on the the archive stream. I don't know if they did on the live one, but there was a dark match. Um, it was a tag team match. It was Wheeler Yuta and Rocky Romero versus the DKC and Kevin Knight. Um, I didn't get to see this because they didn't show it, but Wheeler Wheeler Yuta um, got the victory uh, for for his team. Okay, um, the first official match of the card was a six-man tag. It was the LA Dojo's Yu Yu Yuamura, Clark Connors, and Carl Fredericks taking on the Factory, made up of QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, and Nick Camarado. Um, you know what? It was actually a pretty dang on decent opening match. I, I liked it. I, I actually thought it was was pretty good. But, of course, you know, the Factory and, you know, QT Marshall is going to do their, their dirty tactics and shenanigans. Hmm, pardon me. Uh, QT Marshall took advantage, I believe it was a low blow on Yu Yu Yuomura before hitting him with a diamond cutter to get the victory for the, the Factory. So, not surprised at that outcome. I was hoping maybe the LA Dojo would pull it off, but... Realistically, I, I can't be too surprised that the factory won. <clears throat> Next up, we had ourselves a 10-man tag where we had Fred Rosser, Josh Alexander, Alex Conklin, Ren Narita, and Chris Dickinson taking on the uh, Team Filthy made up of the West Coast Wrecking Crew of Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson. We, they had J.R. Kratos, Black Tiger, and Danny Limelight. Uh, this was a very enjoyable match. Um, I felt like all ten men got to showcase quite a bit. Um, more and more, I'm starting to like uh, Danny Limelight a lot more and more. Uh, dude, Dude's pretty great in the ring. <clears throat> and of course, you know, Josh Alexander in there doing his thing, the walking weapon. It was good to see him. But, um, oh, and J.R. Kratos, man, that dude can fly. That's a big dude that can fly. I was impressed. But when it was all said and done, Fred Rosser got the uh, crossface chicken wing submission on Black Tiger, made him submit, and uh, got the victory uh, for his team. Okay, next up we had uh, Filthy Tom Lawler going up against... Uh, Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata. Now, originally, this was supposed to be a non-title match for the Strong Open Weight Championship. Uh, non-title. But then, Yuji Nagata was able to convince Filthy Tom Lawler to put the title on the line. And therefore, this became a title match for the, open, the Strong Open Weight Championship. And you know what? It was... It was actually a good, great match between these two. It was very much back and forth. I mean, you know, a, a, a legend like Yuji Nagata with, you know, Filthy Tom Lawler, who has been a great, strong, open weight champion, and ultimately was able to uh, dethrone the legendary Yuji Nagata. And that makes nine successful title defenses. And we have to remember, Filthy Tom Lawler is still the first strong open weight champion. Nobody has been able to dethrone him yet, and he is the inaugural champion. So we'll have to see who uh, who steps up next to try to challenge uh, Filthy Tom Lawler. But dude is still on a roll. He's still on a roll. <clears throat> Next up, we had a 12-man tag match between two very powerful factions. We had United Empire's Jeff Cobb, Aaron Hanare, The Great O'Karn, TJP, Kyle Fletcher, and Mark Davis taking on Bullet Club's El Fantasmo, Hikaleo, Chris Bay, um, The Good Brothers, Don Gallo's Machine Gun Carl Anderson, and Scott Norton. Scott Norton joining the the Bullet Club for this, which, I mean, isn't too surprising. We have to remember Scott Norton not only has wrestled in Japan before, but he, you know, was a member of the NWO. So, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. 
So, Scott Norton uh, in the ring for some action. Thought that was pretty cool. Um, it was a very entertaining match. But um, United Empire was able to get the victory as um, uh, Chris Bay got pinned after taking a really nasty, sweet-looking double team. I believe it was from Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis. Um it was, it was a very similar uh, uh, double team finisher that the Motor City Machine Guns used to beat the Young Bucks to win the ROH tag team titles uh, like like one or two years ago. I think it was two years ago, something like that. But yeah, very similar looking finisher. But it was it was cool. It was really cool. And then next up, we had a Chicago street fight. This, this was actually pretty intense and just everybody was all over the place. But it was a six-man tag Chicago street fight. Well, not a six-man tag, but a six-man Chicago street fight. We had Finn Juice and Brody King taking on Jonah, Shane Haste, and Bad Dude Tito. And like I said, there were all sorts of weapons used, chairs, uh, tables. Uh, there was even a door. There's an actual door that was used. Um, fire extinguisher. Like, it was chaotic. It was pretty chaotic. And sure enough, um, it took the, the magical super shillelagh attacks uh, to put away Jonah. Uh, so Dave Finley got, got his revenge for um, them beating down his 19-year-old uh, uh, brother. So... Got his revenge. But it's looking like this may be the uh, potentially the last match for Juice Robinson. I think it was said that his contract with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling is up uh, at the end of this month. So he might, he might do another match or two. But it doesn't look like he's going to be returning to New Japan Pro Wrestling. So we'll see what happens. But I think word is his contract's up at the end of this month. But we'll see. Um, Jay White came out and hosted his US of J Open Challenge, which got accepted by the shooter, Shoto Yumino. And uh, you know what? This was actually one of my favorite matches of the card. Shoto Yumino really brought his A game against Jay White. He almost beat Jay White. He came very close. I really liked the booking of this match. This match was solid from start to finish. Solid. Definitely one of my favorite matches on the card. Uh, but at the end of the day, Jay, Jay, um, Jay White hit a Blade Runner out of nowhere to get the 1-2-3. But I, I definitely enjoyed that match. Ah, uh, one of my favorites on the card. Shota Umino, Jay White, Switchblade. Great match. Great match. And then next up, we had a hard-hitting match that definitely did not disappoint. We had a singles match between the Stone Pitbull, Tomohiro Ishii, and the King, Minoru Suzuki. And let me tell you, it definitely did not disappoint. These two um, have a bit of history. So, if I remember correctly, Minoru Suzuki is 3-2 and two against Tomohiro Ishii. Um, but yeah, these two definitely brought their A game very much hard hitting. But, Tomohiro Ishii was able to even the score to 3-3 three to three after hitting a vertical drop brain buster and getting the 1-2-3 over the king, Minoru Suzuki. So, good victory by the Stone Pit Bull. But, after the match, the Mad King, Eddie Kingston, came out and challenged Tomohiro Ishii to a match at Capital Collision uh, on May, I think it was May 14th, in Washington, D.C. And I believe this is another dream match scenario because I don't think these two have ever faced each other. Yeah, I don't think these two have ever faced each other. So, hey. 
Eddie Kingston, Tomohiro Ishii, sign me up. I think that's going to be a banger of a match. And then we had the main event, which was a singles match between Death Rider John Moxley and Will Ospreay, the leader of United Empire. Um, this was an excellent match. Uh, a rather bloody match as well. But man, I tell you, dude, Will Ospreay is just, it's like he's better and better with every match. That dude does not slow down at all. And John Moxley's no different. These two just, oh man. Definitely main event worthy match. And needless to say, match of the year candidate quality. Took a few deaf riders, I think two or so, to put away Will Ospreay, but man, that was a phenomenal match. Especially him taking a uh, Will Ospreay taking a Death Rider and then going right into it, hitting a Hidden Blade right afterwards. I was like, dang. But, um, excellent match. Excellent match. And then afterwards, uh, John Moxley sent out a challenge to Hiroshi Tanahashi, the ace of New Japan Pro Wrestling, saying that he is going to be the new ace. And he's challenged him, I believe, to a match at Capital Collision in Washington, D.C. The Ace versus the Death Rider. I'm down. I'm totally down. But, uh, Wendy City Riot, that was a good, solid card. Good, solid show. I can't, I can't say that I, I really had any complaints. Didn't really have any complaints at all. It was a great show. Really great show. Definitely worth it. Okay, and before I go, I wanted to talk really quick about um, my experience with Deadlock Pro Wrestling. So, uh, Friday morning, I found out through, um, actually through a tweet, that uh, Hiroyo Matsumoto, Lady Destroyer herself, had tweeted um, an Instagram post, she has an Instagram as well, of her match information against Rosemary, DPW Forever, and I looked at the graphic and saw that it was the following day in Raleigh, North Carolina, my hometown. So I was like, wait a minute, how the heck did I miss this? So I looked it up and, you know, thankfully tickets were still on sale. Um, first row and second row already sold out, but the, the show was announced way back in like, like, early April or, or mid-March or something like that. I wish I would have known about that. But still, but still, I was like, Hiroya Matsumoto, Lady Destroyer herself from Japan is in my hometown. So I had to go. I had to go. Never heard of this promotion. I went and checked out DPW Forever. Phenomenal show. The matches were awesome. They, they had a, gr a good handful of great matches. Um, like I said, Hiroyo Matsumoto went up against Rosemary. That was a solid match. Um, Rosemary did get the victory, but it was a solid match. I mean, just back and forth, and I got a high five from um, Hiroyo Matsumoto. Um, I'll tell you this right now. Kid Bandit went up against Lucky Ali. I'm going to tell you right now, that match was a match of the year candidate. Kid Bandit pulled off the victory, but these two hit each other with everything. What a match. That was definitely my favorite match of that show. Kid Bandit, Lucky Ali, match of the year candidate. I'm stamping it. Uh, we had world famous CB. Some, some of y'all know him as Cheeseburger. He went up against Jay Malachi. That was another solid match. Another solid match back and forth. World famous CB. Say what you want about his size, but that dude is great in the ring. Great in the ring. Um, Jay Malachi did get the victory. 
Um, but it was a great, solid match. Uh, they had, let's see, who, oh yeah, the Work Horsemen. The Work Horsemen wrestled for the, um, DPW tag team titles, um, went up against, uh, NDA, and, uh, it was, it's always great seeing Anthony Henry and, uh, J.D. Drake, and even though they didn't win, because they grabbed a handful of tights, it was still a great match, and that was actually the co-main event. Um, Colby Carino uh, had an open challenge. Uh, it was a hardcore, hardcore match. I forgot the dude's name that he wrestled against, but oh my goodness, it was crazy. They had totes. They had um, they had those wooden boards. They had um, a big old like wooden board that had a bunch of plastic forks sticking out of them um there were a lot of crazy spots a lot of crazy there was a toilet seat with thumbtacks stuck on it like it was crazy it was really really crazy colby did get the victory but that was a very entertaining hardcore match um Savannah he Savannah Evans and Heidi Howitzer, they had a they had a banger of a match. Always good to see Savannah Evans. Glad that she's doing well, and you know she's been doing the Impact Wrestling as well as other shows, as well. She's she's been doing really well. Um, got to see Andrew Everett, uh, another North Carolina native. There was a um, Fatal Four Way uh, to start off. Um, that was really good. Got to see Gringo Loco. For the first time, that that dude's quite a high flyer. Um, Diego Hill, Diego Hill looked really good, but yeah, just a lot of names that I was just learning for the first time, and they just did great, did really great. The main event was for the DPW um, Championship. Um, Bojack, the champion, defended against Biff Busick. Some of y'all know him as Oni Lorkin, and that was that was a great main event. Um, Bojack retained, but oh man, that was a great main event. Great main event. But um, they did a VIP meet and greet before the show, and they did a regular meet and greet afterwards. I was kind of bummed with the VIP one because Hiroyo Matsumoto um, wasn't there for that. So I was kind of disappointed. I thought that maybe I wouldn't get a chance to meet her. But sure enough, she did her meet and greet after the show. So, um, yeah, got a chance to meet Hiroyo Matsumoto. And, uh, yeah, she was phenomenal to talk to. Very, very sweet woman. I actually uh, introduced myself to her in Japanese, and I wore my... Um, uh, destroy, destroy, destroy um, shirt that I got off of ProWrestlingTees.com uh, to represent. I was literally the only fan that wore a Hiroyo Matsumoto shirt. I was, I kind of felt singled out a little bit because I was like, dang, am I the only one that knows Hiroyo Matsumoto? It's like, come on, y'all. It's, it's a top tier Joshi talent in America right now at the show. It's like, come on now, wake up. But, um, but yeah, Got a chance to talk with her. She speaks good English. She actually speaks good English. You, some of y'all probably be surprised, but Hiroyo speaks good English. Um, and of course, you know, she had her Godzilla um, mask as she took uh, when I um, post uh, in the picture with her. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, here, I'll get the, the picture she, she signed for me. But yeah, check it out. But yeah, Hiroyo Matsumoto, Lady Destroyer herself. She was so cool to meet. And, you know, I'm just happy I was able to catch the show. Because like I said, I literally found out about the show like the day before. So thankfully, tickets weren't sold out. It, it wasn't a big show. It was a, it was a, it was an indie show, you know, small show. But... I was just happy that I was able to, to get a ticket and go and, and see her live. Like I said, Hiroyo Matsumoto, I've kept up with for, for a good good number of years. I know she's uh, wrestled for, for Shimmer. I know she's wrestled 
in. Um, uh, I think she's currently with uh, Sendai Girls, or or she might technically be a freelancer. I'm not 100% sure, but but yeah, um, she's been wrestling for a long time. So um, as a matter of fact, Mia Yim, uh, Hiroyo was her first opponent ever when Mia Yim first went to Japan. So, you know, glad to see, you know, how far Mia Yim has come and also Hiroyo Matsumoto, um, who, ha who hasn't done a lot of traveling to the States. So, you know, this was just quite a dream come true, and I'm just blessed that I got an opportunity to meet the Lady Destroyer herself, Hiroyo Matsumoto. This was a dream come true. So, thank you so much. Uh, Hiroyo Matsumoto for uh, for entertaining me and for just coming to Raleigh, North Carolina. That was that was quite a surprise, but I had an awesome time. Uh, the fans and staff were really good. Um, uh, got a chance to I met JD Drake and um, Anthony Henry. I got to talk with Jay Malachi and Lucky Ali. Got to talk with Kid Bandit. Um, Kid Bandit did um, had a rolled ankle injury right near the end of the match with Lucky Ali. So, referee threw up the X. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, um, they took they took very care of them, and uh, still even came out after the show for the meet and greet, which I was shocked because I figured uh, they were sent to a hospital, sent to a hospital, something like that, but it was just, it was a rolled ankle, so, uh, they were still able to come out for the meet and greet, which, hey, that's great, and, um, but yeah, they definitely got a new fan in me, so, Kid Bandit, definitely check Kid Bandit out, if y'all, if you've never seen them, met them wrestle, check out Kid Bandit, you won't be disappointed, but anyway, uh, but yeah, I went ahead and followed Deadlock Pro on Twitter, so because I want to keep an eye out for uh, more upcoming shows. Apparently, they've been to Raleigh before. They had a show at the Raleigh Convention Center early this year, and I believe Ryo Mizunami was at that show. So hey, that just goes to show, you know, when it comes to you know keeping up with different promotions, you know, give them follows on you on uh, YouTube, on Twitter, Instagram. You know, Facebook, you never know, y'all. You never know what talent these promotions may book in your hometowns. Because I had no idea Hiroyo Matsumoto was going to was gonna be in Raleigh until the day before. So, I won't make that mistake again. I now follow Deadlock Pro Wrestling. So, like I said, y'all, you, you never know. You never know who may show up in your hometown. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, that'll do it for this video. Um, hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are. What did y'all what do y'all think about the the current final four for um the Cinderella tournament? Who do you think's gonna win? It's either gonna be Natsupoi, Mirai, Koguma, or Hazuki. Who do you think out of those four is gonna win this tournament? And uh Oh my goodness, I totally forgot. I totally forgot one last thing. I called it. I called it, I called it, I called it, I called it. Konami is returning to stardom and she will be joining God's Eye. Totally called it. And it makes and it makes the most sense. I mean, you gotta remember, Shuri and Konami are tight. You know, they've trained with each other. You know, they, they're tight. They're tight like that. They've always had a strong bond. I mean, they know the same people. You know, they know Tajiri. They know um, Asuka, a.k.a. Kana. Like, they're tight. So it makes sense. So, yeah. Um, I guess it's safe to say that that fourth... I'm guessing that fourth member is Konami for that four-on-four -four elimination match between God's Eye and Donna Del Mundo. That, that must be it. So 
Shirley, Amy Sore, Mirai, Konami. Ooh, that's going to be a tough team to beat. Um, Sounds like Starlight Kid wasn't too thrilled about that. Because, I mean, Konami was, you know, before she was in Oedo Tai. But now she's going to be joining. When she returns, she's going to be joining God's Eye. Now, word is that this is only temporary. I, I, it doesn't sound like she's going to be back full time. So it might be sort of similar to like a Kyrie Sane. Maybe just occasional appearances, occasional matches, that sort of thing. Maybe, maybe like the pay-per-views, you know, stuff like that. But still, Konami. Love Konami. I think she's a beast. Um, she was definitely missed in stardom. So I can't wait to see her return. I think it's going to be awesome. But let me know what y'all think about that. Uh, let me know what y'all thought about New Japan Pro Wrestling's Windy City Riot. What'd you think about the matches? Um, and also, uh, for all those who went to who know about Deadlock Pro Wrestling, uh, let me know what you think about the promotion. And if you were at DPW Forever in Raleigh, North Carolina this past weekend, what did you think of the show? Um, anyway, that'll do it. For this edition of Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll keep up with everything that I upload. Um, I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed day, and I will see y'all soon. Um, pray for my uh, healing that I uh, get better. I'm going to go rest now, so I'll see y'all next time. Peace.